Welcome to Talking Hope, breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer. Brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. Hope lives here in Orange County. Hello, I'm Darren Godden, Chief of Staff for City of Hope, Orange County, and this is Talking Hope. My guest today is Frank Munoz, who serves as both chaplain and clinical researcher at the City of Hope, Orange County, Lennar Foundation Cancer Center. I think it's going to be a really interesting discussion. Welcome to the podcast, Frank. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, so chaplain and clinical researcher, spiritual care and mind-body medicine. Your background must be very uh, unique to bring those two together. Can you tell us more about your background and uh, how you uh, were led to this role? Yes. Um, the foundational experience I had was during my Army chaplain training. Um, there is a trauma ministry program where uh, the Army uses their trauma centers to train uh, uh, basically their medical teams, and they included the chaplains as well. Uh, this is battlefield training. So on the battlefield, the chaplain joins the medical team to uh, serve the, uh, the dead, the dying, and the wounded. And so our role on the trauma team was to bring a sense of calm, both to the medical team and to the patient. So the training happened in San Antonio at Broke Army Medical Center. So we were part of the medical team and I had, you know, the chaplains had, their position was right next to the surgeon. So we were with the surgeon, we were with the patient or with the whole team. Um, and out of that foundational experience, I learned how chaplains bring a sense of calm to kind of decrease the level of stress. How, uh, how do you do that? How do you do that? <laughs> yeah, I think first, um, our first patient is the chaplain, is ourselves. Hmm. So we learned how to maintain a sense of calm in the midst of all the, the chaos and the stress. Uh, and that's something definitely, you know, takes time. You know, we learn how to do. And that's basically uh, what led me in, eventually into mind-body medicine. So I just had lots of questions. I could see in subsequent experiences, both in pediatric and adult, oncology experiences that uh, how we did, you know, how I presented my spiritual care really did have a calming effect to focus uh, first on myself, that I remain calm and centered. And that actually had an effect, you know, on the patient and their family as well. And so, um, of course, this created lots of questions for me. So I see, you know, I can have a calming effect on patients and families, but you know what's happening, you know biologically, you know physically here, and that led me to uh, inquire about research training. So I received a couple of uh, research training grants with the National Cancer Institute, and that led me to um, the Mind Body Medicine Program, which the uh, National Cancer Institute actually funded my doctorate in Mind Body Medicine, and so there I learned more about the science about our mind body connection. And how was this I, while, while you were in, still in the military, or it was this something you pursued after discharging? Yeah, this was after after discharging. Um, I would say almost like fifteen years later. Wow! You know, okay. after you know, lots of experiences. You know, at the bedside with patients and families, um, and I think it really opened up just a new frontier. Uh, and so it was easy for me to kind of fold spiritual care into mind body medicine. So spirituality, you know, and religious practices, they're all about seeking uh, peace, you know, meaning, and that folds very neatly into mind-body medicine as well. So tell us a little bit more about mind-body medicine. What, what exactly does that mean? So mind-body medicine, what we study is how the state of our mind affects the state of our bodies, how our bodies function. And so there's definitely, um, you know, physical, biological connections. Uh, what we, you know, our thoughts, our feelings definitely affect how our bodies function. And the best example is stress, you know, chronic stress definitely has an effect on how our body works. And that led me to, you know, another level. So another question I had is, um, how is this affecting our genetic function, you know, our genes? since our genes are kind of like the managers and directors of our bodies. And so I began to learn that not only does um, our thoughts, 
our feelings affect our body functioning, but also affects our gene functioning. Hmm. So what have you learned in your research? Well, I've learned that stress creates, um, kind of enables gene expression for inflammation. So inflammation is kind of a healing response in our bodies. Uh, and so stress is perceived by our bodies to be kind of a form of injury and our body responds that way. So what was meant to be healing though, begins to lead to, if it continues chronically, it begins to create other problems for us. And so uh, techniques like meditation, prayer, um, yoga, exercise, those are all techniques that tap into our body's natural resources, you know, for, for healing. So that's the other part of my body medicine is that, you know, we do have, it does um, identify and articulate, you know, our own resources, inner resources for healing, for caring for ourselves. So interesting. So your role here at City of Hope Orange County is both let's call it bedside or patient side spiritual care, as well as you're continuing this research? Yes, yes, I'll be able, to, I'll, it'll be a busy time, but um, I think they go hand in hand. I continue to learn from our patients and families, um, how they cope. Uh, a lot of my learning comes from them. In fact, you know, all of my learning has come from them. Uh, I learned from them how they're coping, how they're dealing uh, with a cancer diagnosis, and then um, out of my, you might say, I learned how to uh, apply what I've learned to support them. Hmm. And, and the, is this, is this, um, will there be clinical trials related to this or is this a, a different I, type of research? I think eventually uh, down the road, um, you know, I'm working with Dr. Richard Lee and we have a couple of studies um, on the launch pad, uh, one dealing with meditation and the other dealing with aromatherapy. Uh, and so those are more like feasibility studies, uh, studies to see how well they work, you know, with our cancer patients. And then once we get results, then we'll be able to build kind of a stronger foundation to build uh, more clinical trials. Very interesting. Is this, is this a unique blend for, for folks who do chaplain work to also be a researcher? Yes, I would say, I think, um, I really, to be honest with you, I don't know anyone else who's a chaplain, I would say, who's doing this kind of work, um, especially the genetics part. Um, I actually just completed a uh, postdoctoral fellowship in clinical cancer genomics at the City of Hope Duarte campus. Um, first now I'm at the City of Hope in the Orange County campus. Uh, and there I, I studied with uh, Dr. Stacy Gray in cancer genomics and her team. And um, so I think as far as I know, I'm the only one who's actually delved into this territory, trying to bring, you know, everything together. You know, how does spirituality affect our gene expression? I think I'm the only one who might be doing that right now. Very interesting and innovative, right? And um, different, uh, a different um, skill set that we're bringing to Orange County and hopefully we'll be able to expand across the the broader City of Hope system as well. So let's let's go back to spiritual care for a moment. Um, we talk about caring for patients as a whole person, body, mind, and spirit. As a chaplain, uh, when you work with families or patients, um, what are the implications if we don't care for them as a whole person and we only treat, say, the illness? Right, yeah. They Patients are, I would say, serious. Uh, patients, their approach and their families, their approach is holistic. Um, they're using their spirituality, their religious practices. And, and healthcare chaplaincy, you know, we believe everyone has a sense of spirituality that may be their own personal set of belief system or they may belong to a community of faith. Um, but spirituality and religion, the common denominators, they're all seeking peace, hope, meaning, purpose. And so as chaplains, as healthcare chaplains, we're there to support that journey and that access to their resources. So for the patient and family, they're using everything. They're using a whole person approach. So for us not to acknowledge your spirituality is not acknowledging a very significant part of their lives and how they're dealing you know, with their cancer diagnosis. Wonderful. And, and 
how are we how are we inclusive of so many faith traditions or no faith traditions in some cases? Um, how are how are we inclusive but still able to provide that chaplain support and that spiritual care support? Yes, as um, as a board certified healthcare chaplain, so uh, we receive training beyond our religious training. So there's an extra, at least minimum, a whole another year of training where we learn how to provide appropriate support uh, for patients, families, and also for staff as well. And so the focus is not on our belief system, but on the belief system of patients and families. So we don't necessarily have to have the same belief system, um, but we bring, you know, the healthcare chaplains bring a strong emphasis, a strong sense of respect and admiration and support and compassion. You know, we're here to walk alongside them, patients and families and support them and help them any way we can. So you speak about staff and I want to go back to that in a moment because that's a, obviously a soft spot for me as chief of staff and caring for our, our team. Um, but walk us through when does, when does your role get involved with the patient? How soon, uh, when a new patient comes to City of Hope Orange County, how, how soon might you get involved and what does that look like? Is that something that a physician prescribes that you come in and talk to them or do they have to request it? Walk us through that process. Yeah, generally, it's, um, that's a great question. Uh, generally, the patient or caregiver may raise a question or request that has like spiritual or religious connotations and, and the um, provider that might be a trigger for them to reach out to the chaplain team. Um, I think ideally, you know, we would be part of the initial kind of visit and assessment. Uh, I mean, if you're asking me, you know, my opinion, uh, we would definitely be triggered right alongside everyone else um, just to check in with the patient and family and introduce ourselves. And that way, you know, the, they can see us, you know, face to face and let them decide you know, if they want to make us part of their care. Obviously, there's still a lot of um, education and misunderstanding what the roles of the chaplain are. So we're not here to kind of push any one perspective. And I think uh, a lot of people need that reassurance that we're here to be of support. And that's something, you know, we can easily do and, you know, we're trained to do as well. Um, so you're, you're literally part of the care team, care model. Care, that exactly. we offer here at Orange County, which is really holistic and inclusive of many different aspects, right? That are, that are just beyond, or that are beyond just caring for the thing that's in front of us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're in the process. Uh, I've actually been here maybe a couple of months. We're in the process of setting everything up where we will be integrated with the care. So physicians and other clinicians will know how to trigger the chaplain services, spiritual care services, and we will be involved in every aspect. That's great. So let's go back to the staff piece. You mentioned the staff. I, I, I think Cancer care is a calling, and it, we we bring in some of the brightest and most caring and loving people to really serve in this this area. Um, but it's difficult for some of our our staff. There are difficult times. So, um, what sort of support do you offer to staff, and what does that look like? Yes, great, thank you. Uh, actually, in the my military chaplain training, we did provide. We learned how to provide support for uh, soldiers and the medical teams. And so we learned a basic format, which I call kind of a spiritual debriefing. And so if the, if the team, the medical team is calling on the chaplain to provide some support, you know, if they've had a hard time, difficult time, um, we come in and maybe open with a very uh, prayer, open prayer and allow the, the staff to debrief and kind of share about their experiences and then, you know, I may close with a prayer. Yeah, but the prayer is usually, you know, very inclusive and mm -hmm. reminding us of just, you know, the transcendence of our lives. And um, so usually if, you know, if the staff wants a chaplain involved, there's kind of a, a desire to kind of touch into that sense of transcendence. Very cool. Well, it's great to have you on the team. And um, I, I look forward to seeing the great things that you do. Definitely. Um, so you're collaborate, you're collaborating on research, um, in the realm of integrative medicine. Um, what other studies, uh, are you helping? Well, I think what I hope to do, uh, in the future is, um, 
I've done a couple of studies where I use the mind-body intervention to measure the effects on gene expression, usually genes involved with uh, inflammatory response, um, tumor suppression, or cognitive functioning. So I hope to return to that in the near future and also you know, begin studies along those lines. Uh, and I know usually um, in, in my experience, you know, the uh, patients are really, you know, jazzed and interested. You know, they want to get involved. They want to learn more about what's happening within their bodies. And even in my postdoc experiences, um, patients were always kind of really keen and interested in learning more about genes and genomic education. And so um, that's something I also hope, hope to provide as well. Um, I've had some training as well. So I can, you know, I can uh, speak on their level because I am at their level. <laughs> and well, uh, so it's easy to lay down a, a basic foundation. Excellent. You you uh, you share very plainly. So it's uh, I know some researchers can speak so high level that people can't quite understand what they're talking about. But um, I, I, I get the connection you're making. So um, are there misconceptions about the role of chaplains in healthcare, and can how can chaplains work to make spiritual care more accessible to patients? Yes, uh, definitely. I think um, on the chaplain side of things, I mean, we need to do better of what kind of skill set we bring to healthcare. Uh, that's something on the chaplain side of things as a discipline, you know, we're working on. Um, and just to, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, bring reassurance to patients and families that we're, our role is supportive. You know, we're not here to to teach them what to believe or how to practice, but we're actually more the students, you know, they're the teachers, you know, we learn from them. Um, and, and for a lot of people, you know, they've, it's there, but they've never really articulated it. So, you know, we have that training and that skill set to help people become more aware of what their sp spirituality means and what that looks like. Um, and for that, teach them to learn how to access. So if any teaching that we do is just helping them to redirect inwardly where their strength mm -hmm. and, and, and the resources are, because they're there and they're using them already in many ways. What about outcomes? What have you seen with outcomes? Just when a, when a chaplain is involved with uh, a patient's journey with cancer, a patient's family with cancer, um, what have you seen the outcome kind of be when the chaplains are involved? Um, you know, my experience is um, it's just some things, you know, that patients have shared with me is uh, things like, um, I don't know how I could have gone through this, you know, without you. Um, and, um, and, and again, uh, it's, it's like, you know, some patients have shared, you know, you know, it's not so much what you say, it's just who you are, hmm. you know? And one person was telling me, uh, you know, I, I pay a psychotherapist $250 an hour. And then, and then you know, but when I'm with you, it's like, it's just a, a totally different feeling. Um, and so maybe you should be a psychotherapist. And I think, but I think it was more about that, um, that presence, you know, of, that we bring with the patients and family. So, you know, we're not the answer people, you know, we don't bring answers, but we do bring uh, a presence and a support to help them find their own answers and their own meaning and purpose. That's great. I teach our OC orientation class. And one of the things I like to share is a personal experience I had when I was in the hospital a few years ago in that I really felt like I experienced the presence of God whenever the caregivers were in the room. Didn't know what their faith tradition was or if it aligned with mine, but something about the fact that they were there and present and offering me the care that I needed at that time. Um, of course, it was during COVID and I was all alone, but um, it was very clear to me that there was a presence there with them, whether they knew it or not. And so I like to share that with our team as well, that the work we're doing, especially with our, our patients with cancer is, um, it's in a way it's very sacred work. And so being open to that, even if you're the MA rooming a patient or walking somebody from the front door to the elevator, that little bit of time, that little bit of presence can make all the difference in the world for somebody who's facing the challenge of their life. So. 
recently. You know, I've had nurses ask me, well, Frank, can you teach me what to say, you know, and, you know, when I work with my patients, and I say, well, I think mm, when you display compassion and care as you're treating your patient, you know, when you touch them gently, um, that is powerful spirituality, just yeah. like you're saying. They Being feel fully, the, fully the, present, the, right, for that moment, even if it's the 30 seconds of a uh, showing them to their next location or something, being fully present and being aware of them and seeing them, I, I think is a huge thing, right? We feel compassion and respect that has a, a powerful healing effect on us. Very much so. Touches you at your the very core of who you are. You're seen as a human and your dignity is kind of honored. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I think I may have said this earlier. We have the saying, when we take a patient's hand, we never let go. Um, what does that mean to you as a chaplain? For me, um, I would say it's about being able to impart, you know, what I've learned uh, in their journey, in the support. I definitely see my role as a companion uh, and that what I have learned that I'll be able to pass on to them and that I'll be able to facilitate their integration. Um, and, um, and through my own like religious academic training, uh, I actually know how to read like Hebrew and Greek. And so um, for me, the, um, the biblical meaning of hope is about presence. It's not so much of an expectation, it's more of a confidence in the present. And for the patient and family to know that I am you know, there for them and I'm, I'm behind them 100%. And you know, they can depend on me to always you know, come through. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, on the heels of that, so what, is, what, is, what does hope mean to you as well? Yeah, hope for me is that um, so much, not a, Future tense, but it's a present tense. It's a presence of um, companionship that we will share each other's burdens. I will be there to carry their burdens any way I can. And they will know that, you know, that I am there for them 100%. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, thank you so much. Frank Munoz, our chaplain at City of Hope Orange County Lenar Foundation Cancer Center. Thank you for talking hope with us today. It's been a pleasure getting to know you and the work you're doing. And thank you all for listening. I hope you'll join us next time for our next episode. And I'm Darren Godden, and this is Talking Hope. Thank you all for listening to Talking Hope, where breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer have been brought to you by City of Hope an NCI-designated Comprehensive Cancer Center. This is the hope you've been waiting for. For more information, visit cityofhope.org forward slash OC or make an appointment at any of City of Hope's five Orange County locations, including City of Hope Orange County Lenar Foundation Cancer Center, the most advanced cancer treatment center in Orange County. Call 888-333-4673. That's 888-333-4673. H-O-P-E.